If you're not a dog owner, you probably have no idea that those bustling dog parks you pass are rife with drama. Tender tumbling in the grass, teeth feverishly bared. There's treachery and there's treats. Boston Globe television critic Matthew Gilbert writes about this splendor in the grass in his debut book, Off the Leash, a year at the dog park, in which he finds himself happily tugged into the doggy dog world of his Brookline dog park. And Matthew Gilbert is here. Welcome to Greater Boston. It's great to be here. So you were not a dog person. You got a dog. And at what point, when you went to this strange land of the dog park and you saw all these personalities, did you realize that it was its own little world? Yeah, instantly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a real classic subculture with its own rules and its own rituals, and you discover that quickly. Um, I felt very out of place for the first few months. And is that you making yourself feel out of place, or is that the dog park people making you feel out of place? It was me. It was <laughs> definitely me. I actually, I think in general, dog park people are quite welcoming. So um, they tried to bond with me, but I wasn't having any of it. So what won you over? Well, I think being around dogs playing is like a drug. You watch them play and they're so cute and they're having such a good time and you relax. Um, I found that just the longer and the more often I went to the park with Toby, the more relaxed I became and the more open I became to new people. Um, you know, there are, the dog park is a mixture of all kinds of people. You get students, you get elderly people, you get wealthy people, you get poor people. And um, I began to feel really drawn to that kind of quirky mixture. Um, there are people there that I never thought I would have anything to talk to about. And then you're, 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 your dogs are playing together, and there's so much to talk about. Well, yeah, because you write about, I think you call it the dam burstage. Yes. This, the, the liberation of anonymity. Right. It's, what freedom does that give you to, to just have these conversations with people you ordinarily probably wouldn't be together with? It's great. I mean, you're, you're, you feel liberated because you don't really know who these people are outside of the dog park. So you, I've heard people's live stories and I don't even know their name. I know their dog's name, of course, <laughs> but um, it's, it's, it's very liberating to be among the spontaneity of dogs. Uh, and you know, I, I think there's a different hierarchy at the dog park. Um, you can have all the money in the world, you can have the best job in the world, uh, it doesn't matter. What matters is, are you, do you love dogs? Are you responsible when it comes to protecting other people from your dog if your dog is aggressive? Well, this is what was fascinating to me because I, you don't think of that. And, and I'm, I am dog deprived, although your book makes me really, really want a dog. Do it. Uh, because I grew up with dogs and don't have one now. But uh, th this notion that you can bring your dog, your sweet little Toby, and he can be attacked. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, what, it's a dog park faux pas. That, I mean, how does that happen? How do you get to that point? Yeah, it was a shock to me. I mean, I think he was just a few months old and a whip it just was all over him teeth bared you know this is an owner whose dogs she has t had two dogs um, had a long history of aggression but she couldn't own that responsibility so she continued to let her dogs off the leash and um, unfortunately Toby was one of the victims you know, I'm critical of her, but I think the overall sense of the book is very positive. I mean, I love the dog park. You know, I do. So, but there are people who don't respect other people, and you know, it's you can't assume that just because they love dogs, they're necessarily responsible good people. So in studying these figures at the dog park and studying the dogs, how much are owners really like their dogs in terms of personality? <laughs> That's a great question. I have found in my anthropological <laughs> dig at the dog park that it usually goes one of two ways. Either the dog and the owner are quite similar uh, or they're opposites. And sometimes uh, that has a visual manifestation too, which is always funny. You know, when you see a tiny little dog and a giant person, or you see a really tall, thin person and a tall, thin dog together. Um, but temperamentally, you find often that the dog and the owner are quite different, and they're pulling each other in different directions. That was the case with my dog Toby and I. Um, he is extremely social. 
I mean, this is a dog, you know, who when he was a puppy couldn't get enough play, couldn't get enough park. You know, I'm a TV critic. I sit at home a lot. In the dark. <laughs> in the dark, 25 hours at least of TV a week. Um, I wouldn't call myself an introvert, but I tend to, toward introversion. Um, and he pulled me out. You know, it was, uh, we weren't alike in that way, and it was a good thing. You know, they say, it's a cliche, but they say you get the dog that you need. Um, not the dog that you want. And I think that's what happened to me, and I see that happening to a lot of other people. So now I'm going to put you on the spot. What, what's more entertaining <laughs> at this point, being at the dog park or, dog park or watching the television that you have to watch? <laughs> hmm, my boss may be watching. <laughs> yeah, be careful. But, and um, choose wisely. To be honest, uh, they balance each other. You know, I, I have found that letting go of the digital leash, as I call it in the book, has been really wonderful, you know, to, to have a break from television and from my computer every day and go to that park and watch real live dogs playing has been so refreshing and uh, wonderful. Okay. And you write so well about it. Matthew thank Gilbert, so Off much. Leash, thank you so much for coming. My pleasure.